Hello class, how are you? Hope you are doing fine. Now, uh, during our previous sessions, we discussed about uh, the adaptations of the guard cell. Okay? So today we shall learn something different. We shall learn something different. And um, we shall actually see how the guard cell performs its core function. You will be guided by me, your tutor, Mr. Juma Nyamawi of Wagals High School. Therefore, today we shall discuss about mechanisms of opening and closing of stomata. Now, before we go to the business today, I think it's imperative we do a recap of what we discussed during our last session. So to ensure that we understand and to ensure that there is continuity of what we learned during our previous session, I want us to attempt the following questions. And the first question is, okay, you have to study this diagram here and then we attempt the first questions, the, the, the first three questions, the three questions alongside. So, the first question here is, what is the name of the structures labeled A? So, what is the name of this structure labeled A? Okay, I hope you have answered. B, good, C, and D. Good. Question 2. What is the function of cell F? What is the function of cell F? Probably you know its name. Can you tell your neighbor the, uh, tell your neighbor the name of the cell? What about its function? Now, how is cell F adapted to its function? How is cell F adapted to its function? You remember the adaptations? So cell F, definitely you have said that it is a guard cell and it has got a number of adaptations. Hope you have answered them correctly. Good. We are good to go. So today we shall discuss about uh, mechanisms of opening and closing of stomata. Now, uh, by the end of the session, you must be able to describe name and describe the, the, the theories that explain how uh, our stomata are actually opened or closed, how the guard cells perform the function of closing and opening of the stomata. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, opening and closing of stomata entirely depends on the tagger pressure of the guard cells. So, in case there is increase in tagger pressure, the guard cell uh, bulges out, hence making the stoma to open. But if it becomes flaccid, the guard cell uh, will, uh, okay, it will shrink, hence making the, op the, 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 the stoma to close. Therefore, there are a number of uh, theories that explain how um, the guard cell perform the, the function of closing and uh, opening. Now, we have three main theories. There are three main theories that try to explain how stomata close and open. We shall discuss the three of them. But to name them, we have one photosynthetic theory. Photosynthetic theory, number two starch to sugar interconversion theory okay and number three we have potassium ion theory so these are the three theories that can be used to explain how the guard cell open and close okay now let us begin with the first theory for us to understand the first theory which is photosynthetic theory I want us, first of all, to observe this uh, diagram. 
I hope you are able to see an open stoma here and a closed stoma here. Now, photosynthetic theory is based on the fact that the guard cells are capable of carrying out the process of photosynthesis. Okay? So, how do the guard cell uh, open the stoma? And how do guard cells close the stoma? That is the question we want to answer today. Now, according to the photosynthetic theory, uh, the chloroplasts which are in the guard cell, when there are expenses of sunlight, they, abs uh, they absorb uh, trap light, hence photosynthesis occurs in the guard cell. This leads to production of glucose. Because glucose is osmotically active, it will increase the osmotic pressure of the guard cell. Remember, the epidermal cells surrounding the guard cell do not have chloroplast. Therefore, photosynthesis occurs only in the guard cells. So during the day when there is presence of light, photosynthesis occurs in the guard cell because there is presence of chloroplast. Okay? So when photosynthesis takes place, glucose is produced. Glucose is osmotically active, hence increases the osmotic pressure of the guard cells. This leads to water to move into the guard cells from the nearby epidermal cells. Hence, causing the guard cells to bulge open, to become turgid. Because the outer uh, wall is thinner than the inner wall, as it bulges, it exerts pressure, hence forcing uh, the stoma to open. Is it clear? Good. So what actually activities causes closing of the stomata? Now, in the absence of stomata, or oh, sorry, in the absence of sunlight, the sugar or the, the glucose which has been produced during the, during the process of light uh, is converted to starch. Okay? Starch is osmotically inactive. Therefore, the guard cells will act, uh, the osmotic pressure of the guard cells will reduce hence the guard cells will lose water by osmosis to the nearby epidermal cells so as the guard cells lose water as the guard cells lose water they become flaccid hence closing the stomata so that is the photosynthetic theory good so what have you learned about the photosynthetic theory it occurs only when there is presence of light, probably during the day. So we have said that chloroplast in the guard cell carry out photosynthesis during the day. Then the glucose manufactured in the guard cells increase the osmotic pressure of the guard cells. The cells then draw water from the surrounding epidermal cells by osmosis and hence become turgid. The outer thin wall stretches, pulling the inner thick wall outwards. Okay? Hence, opening the stoma. At night, no photosynthesis occurs. Manufactured glucose is changed into insoluble starch. This lowers osmotic pressure of the guard cells, which lose water to the surrounding epidermal cells by osmosis, and hence they become flaccid. Therefore, this stoma closes. Is it clear? So, for photosynthetic theory, it explains the opening and closing of stomata in the event that uh, photosynthesis occurs, leading to production of sugar. Okay? So when sugar or glucose which has been produced in the guard cell accumulates, the osmotic pressure of the guard cell increases, hence drawing water from the surrounding. Is it clear? As the water accumulates in the guard cells, they become turgid because the, thin, the, the, the outer uh, cell wall of the guard cell is thinner than the inner. It stretches, hence pulling the, the thicker inner walls. 
therefore opening the stomata is it clear now we want to go to our second theory starch sugar interconversion theory starch sugar interconversion theory so how does starch sugar interconversion theory works or explain now it is important to note that starch sugar interconversion interconversion theory uh, postulate that uh, there is change in ph which brings about conversion of either starch to sugar or sugar to starch so let us see how actually that happens now according to the starch sugar interconversion theory during the day photosynthesis takes place in the gut cells due to presence of chloroplast good now this uses carbon 4 oxide because carbon 4 oxide is acidic the ph in the gut cell tend to rise meaning becoming less acidic okay as carbon dioxide is continuously used up the increasing in ph favors the conversion of starch into glucose so when the condition become less acidic okay it leads conversion of starch to glucose now because glucose is osmotically active it increases the osmotic pressure of the gut cells it increases the osmotic pressure of the gut cells hence the gut cells will draw water from the nearby epidermal cells and become turgid this will end up opening the stomata because the thinner or the outer layer the outer cell wall is thin is thinner than the inner hence it stretches making the cell to bulge outwards therefore opening the stomata is it clear at night there is no sunlight so photosynthesis does not take place plants take in oxygen releasing carbon four oxide due to respiration okay now as carbon four oxide from respiration accumulates in the gut cells as they accumulate in as it accumulates in the gut cells it lowers the ph meaning the ph becomes more acidic because carbon dioxide is acidic gas okay so it lowers uh, the ph and favors the conversion of glucose to starch favors conversion of glucose to starch because starch is osmotically active okay it makes the gut cells to absorb water from the surrounding uh, epidermal cells the cell becomes flaccid sorry because starch is osmotically inactive it reduces the osmotic pressure in the gut cells which makes this, the gut cells to lose water to the surrounding epidermal cells and become flaccid this will end up closing the stomata let us have this illustration again so that we understand better we have said that we have said that um, the starch sugar inter the, the starch sugar interconversion theory is based on the concept of a change in ph so what happens for the gut cells or in the gut cells during this process so as we are saying during the day photosynthesis occurs this consumes carbon 4 oxide and we know that carbon 4 oxide is acidic so when it is continually consumed by the gut cells the gut cells become less acidic meaning the ph will raise it will be, it, it will actually move towards ph 7 okay therefore it becomes less acidic those conditions favor conversion of starch stored in the gut cells into sugar because sugar is osmotically active okay sugar is osmotically active it will make the osmotic pressure of the gut cells to increase hence the gut cells will tend to absorb water into the gut cells by which process by osmosis is it clear therefore the gut cells become turgid and 
leads to opening of